I'm ready to go. All right, we'll start off with Tom Noy. Robbie, uh, Robbie, I got a couple uh, questions for Coach about Apprentice, so if I can just get a couple in real quick. Sure. Mike, you said the other day, it seemed like six weeks ago since you last played, but yeah. Prentice had one of his most complete games. What what was different about Prentice that day against Boston College? You know, Tom, um, he has managed our offense, I think, for the most part, really well. I think one of the things that we tried to challenge him leading up to Boston College, and I would include Trey Wirtz and Dane Goodwin in this too, is a more consistent, competitive defensive stance. And – you know, I, I think that, you know, we address some things, his concentration on both ends of the floor, not just the offensive end, on both ends of the floor, I thought maybe was his best since he's been here. And, and um, you know, and I told him that on Sunday. I, and, 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 I, and I, you know, I've come back to trying to keep reinforcing that, you know, throughout. But um, um, sitting in a stance – defensive possessions being uh, more consistently important. Um, offensively, he gets it and he runs our team and he, I think he's cleaned up shot selection through the year and has been better with his shot selection. Uh, but now I want to add the, um, the, the, the defensive concentration and, and more of a physical stance. And, and again, I'm going to add Wirtz and Goodwin in this, you know, and I thought, you know, they, they, they have the ability to have a better, stronger, more focused stance uh, on the ball. And, um, you know, it's something, you know, we want to keep reinforcing. I know it's kind of odd to, to ask, but given all he's done during his career, but is he still trying to figure out like what, maybe what this team needs best from him as far as a little less scoring, a little more managing, like you said, a little more defensive presence. Yeah, no, I think so. I think, I think I, I, and that's a good point. I think, you know, the evolution of, you know, what he needs to do for our group. I, I thought um, he really got everybody involved. You know, he's finding people, he's, you know, he finds Dane, he, you know, Cormac being in a little smoother, more comfortable offensive rhythm probably helps him, you know, mm -hmm. that he knows now, you know, he's smoother and when he's in that mode. Also, um, you know, Trey, Trey on the floor with him helps him handle the ball a little bit too. And then he get off, he gets off the ball some. And he's found, you know, I can sneak off the ball and be a two man and be a shooting guard. And, and that, that is, that's, that's an evolution, especially because Trey's only been eligible uh, and or healthy than, you know, sporadically here the last couple of weeks. T him taking fewer shots at the end of the clock. Is it maybe a case of him needing to, to get this team into more of a flow early in the clock situation? Yeah. And, you know, one of the things we did um, on Thursday and Friday is, is go back to practice with a 20 second shot clock. Mm -hmm. So, so we get down the floor quick and we don't walk it up and, and try and get down the floor and, and get into a little more of, you know, swing it and drive, swing it and throw it in the post. So um, yeah, I, I think there's an evolution to him. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a catch 22 because there's been nights where you know, some guys aren't in a great rhythm and he looks around and goes, okay, I tried getting everybody involved and they're not really feeling it. So I better go try and do something. Mm -hmm. And that's probably where I've been protective of him at times. You know, um, having said that, I think we have um, other guys trending the right way and he can be a little more secure about spreading it around. And then, you know, being in a better stance on the other end of the floor. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Thanks, Tom. Next, we'll go up to uh, Tim Priester. And, and Robbie, if I could also ask a couple questions, please. Uh, good morning, Mike. Uh, hey, Tim. Just, if you could just give me an idea where, uh, where you see your opponent uh, this weekend. Well, last time they played in their building, they beat Louisville. They weren't very good up at Syracuse the other night, um, you know, but an athletic group that's going to 
you know, I talking about our stances, they're going to drive at our heart and our lane and be up on our backboard. And, you know, that's an area where we have not been as good as we need to be. And so, you know, it's a, a, a great, you know, challenge for us. I mean, you know, if we could, if we could put a two game win streak together in this league, you know, given where we are would be, you know, a heck of a thing. That's what was so disappointing about Monday's game being canceled. The last media timeout in Charlottesville last Wednesday, obviously the game was over. And I said, look, we got a chance to win two games in three days. And I know that's probably a little greedy to say that when you've lost four in a row and been thumped a little bit, but I thought they needed some hope and I thought it was a realistic comment. And, you know, it was kind of disappointing as much as the Howard game had a lot of symbolism and education and statements around it, if it happened, it was also a team we could beat. And, 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 you know, to win two games in three days after what we've been through, I thought would have helped us. Having said that, so you go back to a week of training camp and practice. Yesterday we went in the arena and, and it was basically a game. We scrimmaged. We got up and down and we had to play midweek. Um, but Miami's driving at you up on the backboard stuff. It, it will be, you know, that'll be the, the rubber hitting the road for us. Can we handle it? Right. Yeah, you know, after the BC game, you talked about – getting on the floor and scrapping a little bit more in, in practice. And it, it showed certainly on both ends of the court against BC. I, I wonder how do you balance that fine line between scrapping and keeping your team healthy? And on the occasions in the years where you have had less than a maximum of scholarships handed out, what's been your, what's the reasoning behind, behind that? Why have you gone in that direction? Well, I, I think, I think we needed to try and remind our guys of the, that they do have an edge. You know, nobody, nobody gets to this level of playing college basketball without being a competitor and having a, a, an edge about them. But when you get thumped a little bit by really good teams, you know, it, it, you're back on your heels. Human nature kicks in. And I just thought we had to taste it every day in practice. And we continually do, even though we scrimmaged yesterday, we started practice as we will today, and we've done is with our compete drill, which is one-on-one -on -one from different spots. The guards are out on the perimeter, the big guys are in the post, and they're just and you're isolated. Can you put a chest on? And if you get scored on, you stay in till you get a stop, and then another guy goes. So we had a situation yesterday with a player. We had guys, uh, some uh, different guys scored eight straight times on him before he got a stop. He was thoroughly exhausted. And you're right, though, that fine line of, okay, I don't need anybody getting hurt either. So, you know, we're, we, we have to come back to that a little. That, that, that's got to be something we do the rest of the year to remind them. And they love it. They really love it. They really, it, it's kind of therapy. They need it. They need to remind themselves of it. So it's, it's uh, you know, we, again, we got, if it comes off three games in six days, oh, recovery, how do you get your legs back, whatever, you know. Um, you know, we'll have to balance that, but, uh, you know, we, we've, we've got to, got to stick our nose in there a little bit in our compete drill, uh, every day, the rest of the way. And, and, and in terms of not being at the 13 scholarship limit, um, I mean, do you, do you like to try to avoid disgruntled players at the end of the bench? Um, well, you know, oh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I guess we haven't forced it. It's never, we, I don't think we've ever, Tim, we've ever said, Hey, let's fill them up. And, 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 and that's probably part of it. You know, you, you want, you want guys to see a path to playing time. Uh, even though maybe as freshmen, it's not there right away. There, there's some kind of, you know, path to it. Um, you know, so we, we've just kind of, you know, 11, 12, whatever, I guess next year right now, if everybody comes back with who we have coming in, we'd be at 12, I believe. And, and, and um, uh, you know, and then, you know, you, you, you find bodies. Elijah Morgan has been a heck of an addition, you know, uh, to make sure you have enough uh, to practice. So, yeah, it's probably been a little bit of don't force it, show guys a path. Um, you know, yeah, I've, I've been a big believer in, you know, uh, 
the locker room and guys knowing they're going to have a chance and, uh, and, 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 and you just, you, you want to avoid, even though I guess you can't avoid it now in this new rule of transfers, you know, you like to retain kids, you know, and, but the way the world is now with, you know, we've had kids that have just wanted to go and play. And um, I guess if it doesn't happen for them quick, you know, kids are more apt to look to go and transfer rule, probably even though it was delayed, will go through. So, you know, it's going to be year to year managing your roster, you know, and, you know, as I talk through this, maybe it is more, all right, get 13 guys. And if you lose three, replace them with two. <laughs> it's a weird way of thinking. It's not kind of how I've thought, you know, uh, about it, but uh, we may be in new territory here when that rule becomes official. Right. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thanks, Tim. All right. Next, we'll go to uh, Patrick Engel. And Robbie, if I too could uh, ask a couple here about uh, Nate. So, Mike, I assume, you know, it's not really news can, uh, what Nate can do uh, shooting and, and what he's given you as a mismatch, but what's been different this year that's simply just seen more of those shots go in and then still be able to put the ball on the net even when they're trying to take away some of those threes like some opponents have? Yeah, Patrick, I think, you know, his improvement physically over the summer, I think I've said a couple times where I didn't see my guys physically in person other than Zooms for four or five months. And they all looked different when they came back August 10th, but he looked the most different. And Tony Relinsky and I immediately huddled and said, wow, you know, and they all found their weight rooms at home. He looked like he became more of a man physically. And I think you guys can see that too. <clears throat> and I think that's been the key to helping him believe a little bit more, you know, that he is a high level player. And I give him a lot of credit um, in that now there is a real scouting report on him taking away the three point shot. So he's posted more with the mismatch. And he's driven the ball more when people have closed out to him and he's gotten to the foul line. Now, I think he's going to be an 80% free throw shooter when it's all said and done. He's struggled a little bit from there, which I think amazes both me and him with a stroke like that. But I think that's something that'll come probably this week. And, and he has done it where he's made, you know, he'll go six for seven, seven for eight, because that's the kind of stroke he has. Uh, He's also, you know, he, he, we don't talk about this much. He's, he is our most unselfish defender. He, he just wants to help and rotate. And that's why he gets in foul. He used to get in foul trouble sometimes. He's gotten better at that, staying out of foul trouble. Cause he, 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 he just unselfishly will guard everybody's guy if they're beat. And, and um, he's got a great voice defensively. I, I'm, you know, he's really become a heck of a college player and there's a toughness you know, there, there's a toughness now that he can back up because he's stronger. And I guess when you go back and, and watch film of uh, some games, how often, especially compared to the uh, last couple of years, do you see yourself thinking this is this much more of a, a mismatch, even if he doesn't end up taking a three on a certain possession, just what it opens up uh, somewhere else? Yeah. Well, I mean, when he's on the court, he does space the floor. You know, and, and if it's a second big guy guarding him, that's a difficult matchup to find him. You know, we have done a really good job of finding him in transition. Um, and, and, you know, and, and he's hard to locate as he's running and spotting up. And our guards, especially Prentice, really know where he is and have found him. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it's a tough matchup when you have a, a big on him. Now, again, what a lot of people have done have just anytime he's in a ball screen, they've switched it. So now Prentice's man is on Nate and, you know, he really is locked up in him and a lot. Of, and what we've kind of done is then he's kind of going into the post and we've posted him and he's gotten fouled or he's got some buckets inside. And, and I really give, I give Prentice a lot of credit for that. If he sees that right away and verbalizes that and, and, uh, and so, you know, he's, he's kind of doing it. Nate's scoring and doing it a little bit all kinds of ways. And, and uh, you know, I'm proud of the guy he's become. Thanks, Mike. All right, we'll go to Kevin O'Neill. 
Okay, Coach, um, yes. I want to I circle back a little bit to your conversation with Tom about consistency. And, um, you know, Nate is game in, game out consistency, uh, consistent. But if you look at the, uh, the stat lines for other players, they, they tend to jump all over the place from one game to the next. <clears throat> And I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what's in your coaching bag of tricks to try and draw guys to more consistent game-to-game -game production. Now, you are right on there. We've been all over the board in, in, in other areas. And, you know, it's a little bit of you, – you try a little – you try a little bit of everything. You know, a little bit of tough love, a little bit of confidence giving, a little bit of that, a um, little bit of change in the lineup. Hey, has Cormac Ryan coming off the bench – starting in the second half of the Virginia game, has that helped him? Uh, maybe that's helped him, you know, and, and he comes in and he's been a little smoother and, and not as frenzied on the offensive end. He always defends for us. He always works on the defensive end. You know, Dane Goodwin, the same way, you know, he's on a, he's rolling and then all of a sudden he's a little bit missing in action. And so we bring him off the bench. Now, <clears throat> you, you'd like to not have to, uh, not start guys to jumpstart them. You know, you, you'd like to get to a maturity level of, okay, you seven guys are playing. Here's how we're going to start. You know, can you deliver? We're, 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 we've not been able to find that. And, and so you keep pushing buttons and playing around with some stuff, you know, with lineups and playing time and, and starting and, and, uh, uh, and, and, tough love <laughs> and then and then the day before the game you know hugging them up to try and get them feeling good it's a little bit of a mixed bag I certainly have I certainly do not uh, have my finger on the pulse of it at this point <laughs> final question we'll go to David Teal Mike as as we hit February and then approach March, is that last week after the regular season, just from a virus standpoint and a practicality standpoint, is that going to be best bringing everybody to Greensboro for a conference tournament or maybe using that time to make up some postponed regular season games? Have you given that much thought? You know, I think we've all talked about it on our campuses with our ADs. Um, there's been nothing coming from the ACC office and Paul yet on a change of plans for the ACC tournament. One of the theories that my AD has, and he is on the subcommittee for basketball and meet talks weekly with Paul, I think Bubba Cunningham and Vince at Louisville are the other two ADs on it. You know, why would you send, why would your team go all the way to Greensboro when the risk is you could only play one game. So is, is there a different format in Greensboro where you're guaranteed more than one game? Um, and Jack Swarbrick has, I think, thrown a lot of different ideas at, at, at Paul. And I think that's valid. You know, um, I think that's valid. It, it, and uh, how that shapes up, you know, I, I don't know, but I know, uh, uh, I know there's a lot of things being thrown out there, but probably by February 1st, we probably are going to have to make some decisions on if it's going to be the, the normal format um, or if it's going to be different. And, you know, what, you know, one of the concerns that I heard brought up was, you know, will teams opt out of the ACC tournament, you know, given their situation? You know, and, and that's probably a, a reality. Like, you know, so like, well, we're done. That's it. And um, so I, I, I guess I know Paul's trying to be as flexible as possible, but I do like the idea of maybe the format's different. So not everybody goes down there with just, you know, you know, the guys that lose are done, you know, in the first that you get to, you get a couple games. Can you get three games guaranteed? One idea I heard was three five-team pods, so everybody would have four games. That's kind of interesting. Now, I don't know what that does for TV. I know we have a TV contract, and we've got to fulfill that for the ACC tournament window. So, um, you know, more guaranteed games, though, 
given that we given that we're we've lost games and we're not going to have the full allotment is is probably a good idea thank you very much coach appreciate your time thanks guys take care be safe